start. The Harold's main engine starts. Four, three, two, one, zero, and lift off. Lift off. In our natural pursuit of knowledge, space has always mystified and beguiled us. Over the past five decades, we've pushed the final frontier inevitably onward into the ether. The cost has been colossal. Now every day, new data, new conclusions, and the thirst for deeper exploration propel us inexorably onward. The advantages of the discoveries made through space travel are myriad, but the fundamental curiosity as to what is out there will always fascinate and taunt us. Come with us now into the unknown and discover the disappearing frontier. Coming up in this edition. In mid-July of 1994, major telescopes on Earth and in space were trained on Jupiter for what was expected to be one of the most significant astronomical events in history. A direct collision between a comet and a planet in our solar system. While it was known when and where the comet would strike, it was unknown what kind of celestial fireworks would be witnessed. The development of virtual reality technology is giving scientists a unique perspective into planetary exploration, while at the same time providing the impetus for much more earthly applications of the process. When the cost of a shuttle is too expensive to probe the upper atmosphere, scientists sometimes resort to tried and true technology from the past to gather data from the fringes of space. key factor in the development of our most advanced aircraft is computer modeling and the same research is contributing to the enhancement of medical science. Despite all the computer driven technology available to scientists today, the skill and artistic ability of the model maker still has a key role in the modern space program. And when an oil well stops flowing, the expense of discovering the problem can be disastrous. With the help of space technology, a company has developed a cost-effective camera that can transmit pictures from three miles below the surface of the Earth. Those stories coming now on Disappearing Frontier. What looks like a scene from a science fiction movie is actually real. Scientists from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory have digitally manipulated spacecraft data from Venus to give us a bird's eye view of its surface. The scientists have taken the idea of being there a few steps further. By strapping on 3D visual display goggles and specially censored gloves, one can be immersed into new worlds. What's unique about virtual reality is that the user has complete control over the environment. Head or body movements translate directly into the way a simulated Martian landscape is seen. In another example, the task is to withdraw a square shape from its slot. The operator's glove can be manipulated to control the robotic arm, while sound cues help with depth perception and finding proper fit. Scientists have also designed a virtual wind tunnel. The investigator can move anywhere in the tunnel to study airflow. Virtual reality gives the operator complete choice and is used for a variety of commercial applications. Virtual reality is an idea that dates back to the 60s and is quickly becoming commonplace. It was used during the Gulf War to train tank commanders and soldiers. The American bobsled team honed their skills for the Olympics with a form of virtual reality. And the Japanese have developed a system that allows architects to walk clients through a virtual building before it's constructed. The dry valleys of Antarctica may soon become a far-reaching outlet for this technology. Scientists have long been interested in the area because it's so similar to Mars. Its frozen lakes contain primitive, microbial gnats that live in the water below many feet of ice. 
researchers are planning to use a form of virtual reality called telepresence to operate a remote imaging and sampling vehicle to explore this bizarre world. The potential of virtual reality and telepresence in planetary exploration is very promising, and earthly applications derived from this research may become products we use every day. Southeast New Mexico. Beautiful, rugged terrain with open spaces dotted here and there with towns like Fort Sumner. Famous outlaw Billy the Kid was shot and buried here over a century ago. And the locals joke that nothing's happened since. But actually, every spring and fall, Fort Sumner's small airport becomes a base for scientific research. Investigators from around the world converge here, bringing with them instrument packages weighing thousands of pounds. Their goal is to fly these large payloads 25 miles up near the edges of space, gathering data about things like cosmic rays without the distorting effects of the atmosphere. NASA launches the instruments, but not with rockets or planes. Even aircraft like the ER-2 can't fly high or long enough. And it's not cost-effective to put such large payloads aboard a shuttle. The alternative? Large helium-filled balloons made of a special polyethylene that can withstand cold temperatures in the upper atmosphere. Fully inflated, they can stand 900 feet tall, about the height of the Eiffel Tower. Once a balloon rises above an instrument package, it's released and the two begin their journey to 130,000 feet. Throughout the flight, scientists track the payload, continuously recording the data it sends back. Because the instruments eventually return to the ground, recovery trucks are deployed. These crews often cover hundreds of miles a day, following a balloon's path as closely as possible. Towards the end of a flight, a small plane heads out and surveys potential landing sites for the payload. New Mexico offers plenty of unpopulated areas for safe touchdowns. Satisfied that no lives or property are in danger, the air crew transmits a signal that destroys the balloon and the instrument's package parachutes to the ground. Successful landings don't always mean easy recoveries. Getting transport trucks into the touchdown area is the first hurdle. Hauling out a three-ton load without damaging it is another. And tree-entangled parachutes can be a real challenge. But the people in the program pride themselves on good science at a reasonable cost, and getting payloads back means they can fly again. NASA has been doing missions like this since the early 1960s. Although the balloons are larger and the equipment to launch them more sophisticated, it remains a very reliable way to do studies in the upper atmosphere. It's also often the only way, especially for universities and graduate students with limited budgets. NASA's balloon program, gathering science near the fringes of space. In mid-July of 1994, major telescopes on Earth and in space were trained on Jupiter for what was expected to be one of the most significant astronomical events in history, a direct collision between a comet and a planet in our solar system.
geologist Eugene Shoemaker, astronomer Carolyn Shoemaker, and amateur astronomer David Levy discovered the comet at the end of March 1993. From their perch atop Mount Palomar in Southern California, they monitored the night sky using a 60-year-old 18-inch telescope. The vintage instrument had perfect properties for spotting fast-moving objects. With it, the shoemakers have discovered dozens of comets. It's actually a camera, and exposures of eight minutes are used for each picture to offer maximum clarity and image resolution. On the evening of the important discovery, high clouds threaten to ruin their efforts. But David Levy suggested they continue using damaged film that would otherwise have been thrown away. It was a decision that paid off. Caroline Shoemaker was assigned her regular task of examining the films of each evening's work. Using a stereo microscope to study two pictures of the same field, taken 40 minutes apart, it became evident that something had been captured on the film. The vague image turned out to be a chain of fragments that were formed when Jupiter's powerful gravitational field pulled a single comet apart as it passed by on an earlier near miss. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope was able to take these incredible images. While it was known when and where the comet would strike, it was unknown what kind of celestial fireworks would be witnessed. Timothy Dowling and Joel Harrison of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology developed a model that showed the likely effect of the comet's impact on Jupiter's envelope of gases. The two researchers postulated the effect on the clouds of ammonia gas would be similar to a rock falling into a still body of water. During the six-day bombardment, major observatories all around the world studied the event. But as it occurred on the darkened side of the planet, scientists were expecting flashes of light to be reflected off Jupiter's nearby moons. The Galileo spacecraft, en route to Jupiter, was well placed to deliver more detailed data about the cosmic collision and about the planet itself. The lessons offered by the comet have been ones of life and death. It's been proposed that a comet of similar intensity also struck our planet and brought about the massive environmental changes that killed off the dinosaurs. But of equal importance was the theory that the building blocks of life were seeded on Earth by a comet some four and a half billion years ago. The force with which a series of comets impacted the surface of Jupiter generated some hundred million megatons of energy. Even today, scientists are studying how the planet, which is a thousand times more massive than Earth, responded to the sudden and violent assault. The interest generated by the Shoemaker-Levy discovery especially using such outdated equipment, has spurred a new generation of night sky watchers, all of them hoping for a discovery of similar importance to a little planet orbiting third from the sun. The first A in NASA stands for aeronautics and a commitment to developing the world's most advanced efficient aircraft. Key to the success of this effort today is computer modeling, the ability to evaluate a number of factors before committing to a particular configuration. 
Engineers have also been using these same modeling techniques to improve the design and durability of artificial joints. Joint replacement surgery is performed almost every day at most major hospitals. Here, an orthopedic surgeon shows a widely used artificial knee. Problem is that implants like these currently have to be replaced every 10 to 15 years. Space researchers are using their computer codes to come up with a design that will stay securely in the bone for a longer period of time. These techniques also make it possible to custom design artificial joints. Another medical development involves ultrasound. Originally used to detect structural flaws in aircraft, this technology is now enhancing the treatment of fire-related injuries. Each year in America alone, two million people suffer serious burns. 200,000 need hospitalization. Assessing whether a burn is second or third degree is crucial in determining proper treatment. Now, aeronautic research using ultrasound has been modified to make rapid, accurate assessments of burn thickness. This procedure enables doctors to distinguish between a second degree burn that can heal naturally and a third degree which requires surgical skin grafting. Once left to time and a doctor's eye and experience, burn assessment can now be highly accurate and instantaneous. These improvements, along with the design of artificial joints, are more examples of aeronautical and space research and technology-enhancing medical science. Whether it's a full-scale mock-up of the shuttle used by astronauts for training or a display model of a futuristic lunar transportation system, a small group of craftsmen at NASA's Space Center has probably had a hand in its construction. For 30 years, modeling has been an integral part of engineering support for the space program. Each project, whether large or small, has its own set of challenges. The model shop typically has a number of projects going on at the same time. Here, craftsmen are assembling a model of a space station vacuum cleaner. Larger projects like this model of a heat shield for a space payload go through a series of trial stages before the final component is built. A low-cost wooden fiberglass mock-up helps engineers decide where to place instruments and wiring. A model of the exterior ensures that the heat shield's tiles will fit properly. These are all necessary steps that have to be taken before the final prototype is built. Most model building is still done by hand, but recently labor-saving computer-driven machinery has taken over some of the tasks. The model shop's latest high-tech apparatus literally grows parts out of plastic with the aid of lasers and computers. These model makers have one of only a few laser stereolithography machines in the country. Engineers can come into the shop with a part they've designed and the machine will build it by scanning laser beams into a vat of light-sensitive plastic. Minute by minute, the laser builds up layers of hardened resin. A part that might have taken a week to machine can be completed overnight. Although labor-saving devices play a vital role in modeling, it's the skill and artistic ability of the people that bring ideas to life. The model builders, helping to turn the concepts of today into the flight hardware of tomorrow. From a distance, the oil industry in America might appear strong. Its rigs like small islands dotting the surface of the Gulf of Mexico. But those in the business know there's one basic tenet for survival. Keep the oil flowing. 
A blocked well means costly downtime, and until recently, determining the source of an obstruction often meant pulling the pipe from the well. A procedure referred to as workover. The cost of a workover? $150,000. That expense led to the development of the downhole video locker. Essentially a small camera and light combination that can be lowered almost three miles into a well to see what's inhibiting the oil flow. At around $10,000, a far more cost-effective way of discovering the problem. One of the challenges faced in marketing the new product was the quality of the images produced in such a dark environment. Looking for a way to enhance the video, the designers turned to the Technology Transfer Office at NASA. The problem was presented to computer scientists who drew on technology used to process satellite imagery. The NASA experts developed a software package that captures individual frames of the video signal and manipulates them to bring out significant features. Another example of commercial enterprise benefiting from space technology. The same space technology that's giving a boost to the oil industry is also assisting in the care of the unborn. Nearly every woman who's had a child in the developed world has also had an ultrasound, a procedure which makes it possible to view a baby in the mother's womb. These black and white images, like those produced by the oil well camera, are often noisy or fuzzy. Obstetricians recognize these limitations, particularly in trying to determine the position of the umbilical cord. The cord can become entangled around the baby, cutting off critical blood flow and potentially causing brain damage or even death. Looking to avoid tragedy by improving the ability to detect cord problems, doctors took the ultrasound difficulties to NASA's Space Center. Once again, computer scientists diverted their attention from the space program to assist in the development of medical science they were able to adapt satellite processing technology that enhances contrast and reduces noise, making umbilical cord problems easier to detect. That brings us to the end of this edition. We look forward to your company next time. But remember, we are out there. What we can and can't see is out there. And the mysteries between us, although seemingly insurmountable, are encompassed by a disappearing frontier. <laughs>